I think that the white people should be ashamed of the deplorable situation that has been existing in the Congo, which is not the fault of the Congolese, but which is the result of instigation by European powers who are fighting each other over the mineral wealth of the Congo. And now to make it appear that the Congolese themselves are criminals or brutes because they're reacting to these uh, uh, injustices that they've been victimized by is, is again ducking the question. Shambi is the murderer of Lumumba, who was the rightful prime minister of the Congo. Shambi is the man whose forces uh, fought against the United Nations forces and against the United States, and despite this criminal past of Shambi, uh, now the United States is backing Shambi, uh, who has hired uh, South African mercenaries, who are hired killers to disrupt the uh, peaceful efforts of the freedom fighters from Stanleyville to uh, make the type of country there that they want. Patrice Lumumba was the first democratically elected prime minister of the Congo. He came up at the time of African nationalism and pan-Africanism. Nationalism and the push for liberation really took hold in the 1950s. After World War II, demobilized African veterans of the war who had been drafted and taken to Europe to fight on behalf of empire in wars that they had no role in, came back and started demanding independence. Patrice Lumumba became a clerk in the postal service and he became a member of the postal trade unions. So that's how he really became involved in mobilizing and speaking. And he started writing for Congolese publications as well. He wrote many articles, many columns, and of course, agitating and promoting independence. He was one of the Congolese who formed the first national party. He became one of the leaders, and he went to Accra, Ghana, where Nkrumah had convened the All Africa People's Party. So when he came back to the Congo, he had an even heightened sense of nationalism, the role of Africa in the world, and the role of Congo in the world and in Africa. some protest against the Belgians. 30 people were killed by the Belgian authorities. And they blamed him and locked him up for quote unquote inciting violence. But they could not suppress the momentum for independence. Early in 1916, the Belgians called a conference in Brussels of all the Congolese parties. But Lumumba's party, which was the only really national party, the others were regional, more ethnic based, refused to participate. They said, we will not participate unless our leader is released. So they had to release him from prison and flew him to Brussels. And negotiations continued and the first elections were held in May, 1960. And Lumumba's party won the largest margin. So therefore he formed the first post-colonial government Je vous demande de faire de ce 30 juin 1960 une date illustre que vous garderez ineffaçablement gravée dans vos cœurs, une date dont vous enseignerez avec fierté la signification à vos enfants pour que ceux-ci, à leur tour, fassent connaître à leurs fils et à leur petit-fils, l'histoire glorieuse de notre lutte pour la liberté. He became prime minister and Joseph Kasavubu became president. And he was much more moderate and much more accommodating to Western uh, interests. 
Belgium was not willing to leave, even in 1916. So the Belgians promoted secession of Katanga province. And at that time, Katanga held at least 60% of the known copper resources of the Congo. So they promoted Moise Shombe, who came from Katanga, from a much larger ethnic group than Lumumba's. And they basically told him, why should <laughs> Lumumba be your boss? We can make you the leader of Katanga. Turn Katanga into a country. So when the secession broke out, obviously Lumumba struggled to keep the country united. He invited the United Nations to try to suppress the secession. But by that time, the Belgians had already landed thousands of troops in Katanga under the guise during that chaotic period protecting Europeans, Belgians, who were threatened. That was the guise. But in reality, they were actually shoring up the secession and Tushombe's regime. Tushombe also recruited mercenaries from then apartheid ruled South Africa. So now you have Belgians and you have other white mercenary soldiers fighting to maintain Shombe's rule. He was widely despised, not only in the Congo, but throughout Africa, as a puppet and a tool of Western and CIA and Belgian interests. In September 1960, Mobutu was encouraged by the Belgians and by the United States CIA to seize power for himself because there was a dispute between Prime Minister Lumumba and President Kasavubo, who, as I said earlier, was much more accommodating to Western interests. When the UN forces, which had been invited by Lumumba, failed or were unwilling to suppress the secession, Lumumba then asked the Soviet Union to supply him with transport aircraft so that he could transport his own National Army soldiers to try to crush the rebellion. And the United States and the West used that to paint Lumumba as a communist. And during those days of the Cold War, once you are labeled as communist or pro-Soviet in Africa, that was as good as a death sentence. Is it possible that there may have been American agents in the Congo who turned up later in Laos? I mean, are, are, are these men on both sides engaged in these battles around the world? Oh, yes. Do they uh, meet? Do they? Well, if they meet too much and are seen too much, uh, then they use their utility. Mobutu then took advantage of that environment and in 1960 he seized power and said he was dismissing both President Kasavubu as well as Prime Minister Lumumba. And then Lumumba was under United Nations, some would say protection, some would say detention, home arrest. But his supporters managed to get him out and while he was traveling to the eastern part of the Congo where he had his loyalists who were actually ruling that part of the country, he was pursued and he was captured by the army. Mobutu then handed him to, to Shombe in Katanga, and of course, the rest is history. He reinstated Kasavubo as president and made himself commander of the army. But in 1965, he seized outright power and dismissed Kasavubu and made himself both commander of the army and president of the Congo, which he then renamed Zaire in 1971, I believe. Mobutu pretty much ran the show from 1960 to 1997. I am confident that the close relations between our two countries, based on shared interests and perceptions, will advance the cause of peace and development in Africa.